So in the few days that we had between the smoky gray skies from the forest fires in the interior and the rainy weather that we're having right now, I took advantage of the, sun sh the warmth and the sunshine and I did some experiments and some solar dyeing and I'd like to share that with you. I started out with these little packets of dye materials that I had from a workshop, a Zoom workshop that I signed up for last year and never completed. The first package has onion skins. The next package has something called Osage Orange and I think that they're little flower petals. And I'm going to guess from the name that they create an orange color. This third package is probably the most interesting thing. It has little gray bugs. Those are dead insects in there. And they create quite a marvelous red color. And this plastic bag that I have here is also quite interesting. It has little bits of wood, splinters of wood, that I picked up when I was in Guatemala in a little place called San Juan La Laguna. I visited a weaving cooperative there where I dyed some shawls that I had taken with me and somehow these little bits of wood fell into my suitcase and I'm gonna see what they do here in Guatemala they use them to dye a blue color but as you can see my shawls became purple so I've had my cloth which also came from the same workshop last year and didn't get used I've had it soaking in a bath of alum water. Alum is something called a mordant that is used to help attach the dye particles to the fabric. Oh, I forgot to mention the rose petals and the turmeric. And I'm laying out my materials and I'm not really planning it too much. So I've got the onion skins at the bottom of rose pe petals sprinkled above the onion skins, then I have the Osage Orange, I have the little sticks laid out in lines, and I'm being <laughs> frugal with my little sticks because I can't get more of these unless I go back to Guatemala and I don't think that's happening anytime soon. And I'm putting a nice sprinkling of turmeric all over it. And I'm going to sprinkle on the rest of the materials that I have left in the packages. I don't really need to keep them anymore. I fold the fabric in half. And I'm laying a sheet of copper on top. It's not necessary, but I happen to have it. I'm going to tie up my bundle with this very special piece of cordage that I have that I made at a workshop that I took a few years ago with India Flint, who is kind of the ground dam of this style of bundle dyeing. Now that cord has gone into many dye bundles and it imparts a nice subtle little bit of extra color. Now it's so hot up on my deck here, my cloth is starting to dry out already so I'm just adding some more of that alum water. To oh look, some of the dye stuff is really, it's already starting to show some color there. Now all I have to do is put the whole bundle into a black plastic bag so it doesn't dry out and leave it in the sun for a week, two weeks, I don't know how long. So the first time I tried doing this sort of bundled solar dyeing was on a trip to Cuba. I initially thought that I was going to try dyeing with tobacco leaves, but I didn't actually find any and I ended up using all kinds of things that I found growing on the side of the road or that I picked up from various places and that beautiful brown color on the outside is from the soil that they have there. And <laughs> Funny thing, I'm wearing the same dress when I was doing the dyeing there as I, I'm i wearing in my current <laughs> dyeing experiment. So one of the things that I just noticed is right at the bottom of this dyed cloth there is a very distinct deer face. And the dye bundle, the dyed fabric from Cuba ended up becoming this shirt. And I call it, this is my Cuba shirt. And those words are actually embroidered right on, on it. So 
this dye project didn't quite go as planned. Things went a little astray. Instead of leaving well enough alone and leaving the bundle sitting on my roof deck, I thought it might be a good idea to put it on the slanted roof of my house. What do you think happened to it? It, it had slid down the roof and there it was. So my attempts to retrieve it with a two long sticks duct taped together only ended up pushing it right into the gutter. And I had no better luck trying to rescue it from below. As you can see, our ladder is quite woefully inadequate and the long sticks wouldn't even reach. But as you can see, we, I did manage to retrieve the bundle. Well, my husband retrieved it. It turns out we do have a 32 foot long ladder after all. And all that was left to do was to open it up and see what was inside. And there's been quite a dramatic effect here. So I'm going to wipe off this dye bundle and after it's day or so sitting in the gutter, in the very dry gutter, it's pretty dry already so all the bits come off. And there you go, you can see it, the little dots are from the cochineal, they're actually a really bright red. The dark purple color, almost black in some places, is from the Sacatinta, and the browns and the oranges and yellows are from the other materials. Now those little fresh rose petals seem to kind of got lost. They didn't seem to have as bright color as the other materials. But that's okay, you never know what you're going to get. And do you see the deer face in this one, too? Curious, isn't it? Maybe it'll become my signature when I do solar dyeing experiments like this in the future. And there, you can see all the colors really well there. Can you see the, do you notice the lines that are, that the strings made, that my cordage made there? I really like to use those whenever I do bundles like this 